All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you happen to be, um, I want to do uh, work on a um, uh, order of operations problem, uh, just to uh, highlight uh, some of the features. Um, this this problem's a little more complicated, maybe than some that I've had in the past. And uh, you're welcome to go to the channel and take a look at at some of the other problems. But uh, this one is three times, and then we have the quantity. 3 plus 7 in parentheses minus 4 to the second power, so we have exponents, and then divided by 2. Um, so before we start on the problem, I just want to do this quick overview that I always do. Um, there's a convention that's the order of operations convention, and it's represented by four steps. And this applies to, well, this applies to all mathematics, not just algebra. Uh, the first step involves the grouping symbols, which are known as parentheses. Uh, they're also known as brackets in some countries. Um, then we look for exponents. Uh, these are also called indices or orders uh, in some countries. Um, then there are the three steps involving the operations. Uh, there's three operation steps of multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Um, there's some confusion that starts when some people incorrectly assume that multiplication and division do not have equal precedent. Um, the four steps that I'm talking about are number one, parentheses, uh, number two, exponents. Um, then we solve multiplication or division left to right, rem remembering that they have equal precedents. One doesn't have to come before the other, you just go left to right solve whichever one comes first. Uh, then you have addition or subtraction left to right. And again, addition and subtraction have equal precedence. Um, I've got some more info and some other videos um, on my channel that go into more detail on things like PEMDAS and BODMAS and so on. Um, so let's take a look at the problem and start out. Um, now in this problem, we do have parentheses. Uh, if we didn't have parentheses, you would just go down the list and then look for exponents and look for multiplication and so on. But uh, here we do have 3 plus 7 in parentheses, so we want to solve that first. And so you can see here on the second line where I've got now I've got 3 times 10 minus 4 to the second power divided by 2. All right, so we had parentheses. Do we have any exponents? Oh, yes, we do. If we look on that second line, we have 4 to the second power. Um, so now down on line number three, we're going to solve the four to the second power. And if you remember exponents, four to the second power is just a short way of writing four times four. If it would have been four to the third power, then we would have had four times four times four. Uh, that's all it is. It's kind of, think of it like shorthand, like writing shorthand uh, or make an abbreviation when you're writing something just to save time. That's exactly what exponents are doing for you. So um, on line number three, we've reduced four to the second power to 16. And why is that? Because four times four is 16. So now we've got three times 10 minus 16 divided by two. All right, so we've handled parentheses, we've handled exponents. Uh, okay, let's take a look. What have we got next? Uh, we look down our list, we have multiplication, right? Well, let's go left to right. Uh, what do we? What comes first? Okay. Well, in this case, our multiplication comes first. We have three times ten, so we bring that down. We have three times ten is thirty. Um, then we have division. So we would do the division next. The division sixteen divided by two is eight. Uh, keep in mind we've got that minus sign in there, so we're going to be subtracting that eight now. Um, so we have 30 minus 8 equals 22. All right, so, ah, coffee break. All right, so there we go. Um, we could also, th this next thing I want to do is just to try to show you why order of operations works. It's, it's just, it's, it's not necessarily something that's practical, but it's to try to drive home the reason why order of operations works. It's not, uh, some people think of it as some arbitrary convention that a bunch of guys in wigs 
back in the old days, you know, made up for no reason. Um, but there's actually a reason behind it, and we're going to look at that. We're going to we're going to understand what the relationship is between multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Okay, so just keep that in mind and bear with me through this exercise. I know it might seem a little strange why I'm doing it, but but there is a reason. Um, we could have simplified this problem and reduced it all to simple addition and subtraction. And uh, you might ask, well, what, you know, addition and subtraction, of course, would be easier, right? You might be writing it out a lot longer, but it, you know, it's simpler to work with. We could convert our exponents portion of that problem down to multiplication because we already said 4 to the second power is the same as 4 times 4. And then you could further break that 4 times 4 uh, down into addition. Now, I've got, I said subtraction here because we have to keep in mind we got that minus sign out to the left, right? So you can reduce 4 times 4 to 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. So you see what we're doing. We're going from exponents, we're replacing it with equivalent multiplication, then replacing it with mold, uh, equivalent addition. Um, so we can go through this problem and do this. We've got to keep in mind um, we keep in mind our order of operations and, and resolving things properly. So we could, uh, you know, look at what's inside of parentheses first and simplify it, right? So we had that 3 plus 7 in parentheses. Well, that's 10. 3 plus 7 is 10, right? So we could have uh, 3 times 10 minus 4 times 4 divided by 2. So at, at this point, we've resolved the parentheses. You know, here we we solved inside the parentheses and converted the 4 to the second power to 4 times 4. And then we can uh, we can further convert that 4 times 4 to a equivalent addition, just like I mentioned before. Uh, we're keeping in mind, we got to note where that minus sign is. So we look here towards the bottom, 3 times 10 minus, uh, and then in parentheses, 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, with closed parentheses, divided by 2. Now, as you look at that, make sure you recognize that all that stuff in parentheses is being divided by 2. We have to maintain that. We have to maintain that relationship because, uh, you know, when you look at that problem, we had 4 to the second power divided by 2, which is the same as 16 divided by 2. So we're putting the parentheses around all those 4s to keep that relationship there. So... Um, this is a good exercise to keep in mind, you know, how operators work, you know, what numbers the operators affect, and so on. Because I do see a lot of confusion with that uh, in, some, in some answers. Um, and I'm, like I mentioned here, I put the parentheses around the converted 4 times 4 since the minus sign affects all of that. All right, so let's uh, see what we can do to reduce it further. We have 3 times 10 minus... And then in parentheses, 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, close parentheses, divided by 2. Um, we can go further. We can convert the 3 times 10 to equivalent addition. What is 3 times 10? It's the same thing as saying 10 plus 10 plus 10. So let's write that out. 10 plus 10 plus 10 minus, and then in parentheses, 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, close parentheses, divided by 2. Now, we've almost got it reduced down to simple addition and subtraction. Uh, we're not quite there yet. Um, and my cat just jumped up on my chair, so we're going to work this out together. She's going to help me. Um, so let's convert that division that we have here to multiplication. That's equivalent. So if we're dividing something by 2, it's the same thing as saying multiply it by a half, right? So we can see down here where I've got the 10 plus 10 plus 10 again, minus the four fours that we're adding inside of parentheses, and then multiply uh, that stuff in parentheses by a half. Now, just for clarity, I did put parentheses around the one half. You know, don't don't worry about that because that doesn't change doesn't change anything. You know, you can put parentheses around something for clarity. It's, it's when you put parentheses around lower order operations that you have to be concerned. That's actually changing. You know, parentheses changes precedent, right? So, um, you know, in this case, I'm not doing anything to affect the outcome. It's just in there for clarity <clears throat> to make sure you realize that's a half.
All right, so we're now we're down to having, uh, you know, and if I wanted to, I could go ahead and uh, take care of what's inside of the parentheses with those four fours and add them up, right? Four plus four plus four plus four is 16. So that gives me uh, 10 plus 10 plus 10 minus 16 times a half. So now if we're thinking about our order of operations, we know that multiplication always multiplication always has precedent, right? I could have probably tried to reduce this further, but we'll we'll leave it where it is. Just remembering that we got to do multiplication first, but we need to take our 16 times a half, right? So now look what we have. We have and then and then once we've done that, we can add our 10 plus 10 plus 10. So t you know, 10 plus 10 plus 10 is 30. Our 16 times a half was 8. Uh, keep in mind we got that minus sign in there. We got to keep that. So it's 30 minus 8 equals 22. Um, so you see we've gotten the same answer after a lot of converting. Uh, and this exercise was done only to show that multiplication is, is nothing more than repeated addition and exponents are repeated multiplication. Um, you know, everything can eventually be reduced down to simple addition and subtraction if you take it far enough. Now, this problem might not look practical, but you know, there are other ones that that really are more much more practical. You know, you have situations where you might say, uh, you know, hey, I bought three iced teas for two dollars and five hamburgers for six dollars, you know, three times two plus what five times six, whatever I just said, you know, equals some number. Um, you know, there are simpler real world applications for order of operations. And the only reason I'm trying to show you how to convert the multiplication down to addition and the exponents down and so on is just to try to drive home that relationship between multiplication and addition and so on. Um, because a lot of times people will look at order of operations and they'll think of it as some rigid structure, some random thing that somebody made up with no purpose and no reason, uh, when actually there is a really good reason. When, when you break the problem down, as I just did here, which, okay, you can say it's not practical, and I get that, but the reason, like I said, I did it was so that you could understand why order of operations works. And if you follow it, you don't have to go through this thing I just did of converting everything down to addition and subtraction. You can just follow that order of operations, and you're basically doing that, but you're doing it in a more efficient way. Um, so. I hope this has been helpful, and um, we will uh, try to do some more of these videos as we go. Thank you.